welcome this morning to Christ's Episcopal Church in Bloomfield and Glen Ridge, New Jersey. We are happy to have you here as part of our virtual worship service. The bulletin links are available in both the Zoom and the Facebook Live uh, links, and we are glad to have you follow along. Welcome. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray together almighty and everlasting god who in the paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of christ's body 
may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced, Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the way of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, He knew that God had sworn with uh, with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor does his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will say the appointed psalm responsibly by full verse with the congregation saying the verses printed in bold. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said, you are my sovereign, my good above all others. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libation of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O God, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless you, O God, who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set you always before me. Because you are at my right hand, I shall not fail. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirits rejoice. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your faithful one see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading is from the first book of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Even for now a little while you have been to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. 
Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark on the nails of his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. May God's words be spoken. May God's words be heard. Amen. Amen. Christos Oneste Kai Kalapaska, Christ is risen, and happy Easter to all our Eastern Orthodox sisters and brothers in Christ who today are celebrating Easter Sunday. Yes, we celebrate Easter on different dates, but it is true for Christians of all stripes. Easter is not just a single day on the calendar. We are in Eastertide, celebrating Easter until the day of Pentecost, this year falling on Memorial Day weekend. But in truth, we are always in Easter because we are a resurrection people. But the celebration of the life that grows out of death in the story of the resurrection, in the new flowers and budding trees and the freshness of the spring air is so needed this year, perhaps more than ever before. Given the disease and the death and the isolation we have been facing, 
What is also needed, the story of Thomas, my favorite disciple after Mary Magdalene, which we heard in our gospel today. Now, last week on the Jesus Channel, Mary Magdalene had told the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she had. Jesus chose her to be the apostle to the apostles, the first to receive and preach the good news of his resurrection. She first had told them about the empty tomb, and two of them, Peter and some other unnamed disciple, ran over to check it out. It said they believed, but as we will see, it wasn't about the resurrection. And they didn't believe Mary about his being risen either. So today our story opens with the disciples gathered in a locked room in fear, when in comes the risen Lord himself, right through the locked door. Now, I think it would have been more fun if his first words to them had been, surprise, I'm back. But no, he said to them, peace be with you. Seriously? I mean, the last time the men saw him, he was being led away to be crucified, and the women last saw him hanging on the cross, and the first thing he says is, peace be with you, like, hey, any news? Now, as we will see, though, it was exactly what they needed to hear. At any rate, they didn't say, wow, Mary said you'd be stopping by, here's a cup of coffee and some nosh, you must be starving after three days. Yeah, no. They just stood there. Jesus had to step forward and show them his hands and his feet. Then it says they rejoiced. And for good measure, now that they have come out of their, oh my gosh, a ghost just walked through our door stupor, Jesus again said, peace be with you. So just to summarize, they didn't believe Mary when she said, I have seen the Lord, and they didn't believe Jesus until he showed them his hands and his side. Now, all this is great, except poor Thomas, one of the insider 12, was not there when all this happened. Where was he? Perhaps on a smoke break, using the little apostles' room, or out trying to beat the crowd at Costco for some toilet paper, or maybe he just got tired of the quarantine. But when the disciples told him, we have seen the Lord, he refuses to believe them, unless he gets to see the wounds and touch them. Now, where have we heard that before? Through the centuries, we have turned this poor guy into a Christian whipping boy, this doubting Thomas. I mean, really? He only had the same doubts as everyone but Mary had. But do we do that to Peter, who actually denied Jesus three times? No, we give him the keys to the church. The thing is, there's nothing wrong with anything the disciples did. Thomas or the other ones, except for not believing Mary. And even that was understandable, even if it was likely due to the fact that her name was Mary and not Peter or Paul. Still, those three will make a great singing group one day, but I digress, as usual. No, where we go wrong here is forgetting how vulnerable they were, locked up and isolated, and then thinking there was something wrong with having doubts about what we believe. Now, as I've said many times, so I won't spend much time on it, the opposite of faith isn't doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. When we stop doubting, our faith becomes cemented and grounded in fear. The very essence of faith is uncertainty. If we have no questions, then it's not faith, but fact. Uncertainty, the kind that leads to questions, is the doubt that shadows faith and is so very needed. Faith and doubt are intertwined like darkness and light. To have faith, you will have doubt. Yet, while many people today have doubts about their religious beliefs, they're often afraid to voice them for fear it will show a lack of faith, a weakness in their commitment to God. We become like the disciples, locked inside the safety of our church walls, our church doctrine. We stop asking questions, and so our faith is never given a chance to grow more fully and deeply. So just to set the record straight, There's nothing wrong with Thomas expressing his need to see what all the others got to see. And if you have doubts too, that's just part of being a person of faith. Don't let it trouble you. Ask your questions and keep seeking the answers you need. Because if our faith can't handle that, we have some serious issues. 
So that aside, let's go back to something else, something we often miss in the story. They were in a locked room in fear. If ever we needed to hear this gospel, it is now, don't you think? How many of us are behind closed doors too, isolated and afraid? We try to be strong, yet many of us struggle to keep up with the man managing the chaos swirling all around us. It's exhausting, isn't it? And, and I saw the, an article the other day that said that even though a lot of us are getting more sleep, we seem to feel more tired than ever before. Given that I, too, am home um, a bit more, I was watching, I was binge watching a lot of things actually, but I was watching recent movies about Mr. Rogers. And something struck me, well, a lot of things really, but there was something that brought this gospel reading to mind. Now, I'm sure you all know by now that Fred Rogers was an ordained Presbyterian minister who had a renowned children's TV show called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Anyway, there was a scene in a documentary, not the Tom Hanks one, that's good though, the one titled, Won't You Be My Neighbor? When we hear something from and about the puppet Daniel Striped Tiger that resonated deeply with what we're hearing in today's gospel. Now Daniel was a sock puppet voiced as most of them were on the show by Fred Rogers himself. But Daniel was a special character. He was in many ways an extension of Rogers himself. And Daniel one day was telling another character on the show, Lady Aberlin, that he wondered if there was something wrong with him. He said to her, sometimes I wonder if I'm a mistake. I'm not like anyone else I know. When I'm asleep or even awake, sometimes I get to dreaming that I'm just a fake. I'm not supposed to be scared, am I? Sometimes I cry and sometimes I shake, wondering, isn't it true that the strong never break? I'm not like anyone else I know. I'm not like anyone else. I thought it was one of the saddest and most truthful things I had ever seen. Yes, it was just a sock puppet, but we, even when they themselves didn't quite know what that looked like yet, he would listen to them in such a way as to hear them into speaking and thereby breathe courage into their hearts to trust in their own feelings and love themselves as God loved them. And I think that's what Jesus is doing with Thomas, or for that matter, Peter and the rest of them. Yes, all of them. Think about it. The gospel says they were hiding from the authorities, or in the text, Jews, but we all know that's a ridiculous thing to say. They were all Jews, Jesus and all the disciples, and they had... And so let's just put that anti-Semitism aside. They were all scared, and they had every right to be afraid, too. Their rabbi had been given a criminal's gruesome death on the cross by crucifixion, and they figured they were next. But I think there was more to it. Peter had denied him three times. Perhaps he was feeling like a fraud, shameful for what he had done. There were James and John and Peter again, who could not even stay awake with him in the garden when he was in need of their company. They had failed him. And all of them fled, the men anyway, and did not stay with Jesus in his final hours as he hung on the cross. These were people who were not only afraid, but feeling like they had not lived up to what they needed to be for the one who loved them beyond measure. Perhaps they were feeling like they were a mistake not the disciples Jesus thought they were. So Jesus came back for all of them, even making a special trip just for Thomas. Because I think Jesus knew that if he did not return for them, that they might have ended up with this lingering Daniel striped tiger feeling of not being good enough. Jesus comes to the vulnerable, like those disciples behind the locked door, to the grief-stricken Mary, and to the ones who are left out like Thomas. He comes most especially to these to bring his peace to their hearts. And he comes for us now, too, when we are in our deepest Daniel Striped Tiger moments, feeling fearful, broken, or not strong enough. Jesus comes to us, too. He will come to let us know that we are God's beloved children, loved just as we are. 
That's essentially the message Lady Aberlin gave to Daniel Striped Tiger in her answer to him in that song when she said, crying or shaking or dreaming or breaking, I think you are fine just as you are. You are not a fake. You are not a mistake. How many of us could use that right now? Someone to remind us that we are all we need to be. We are enough and we are loved. Perhaps you too are feeling this way in this crazy time in which we find ourselves. And if you do, if you are singing a song in your heart of brokenness or fear that you are not what you should be or what others expect you to be, if you are crying or shaking or thinking that strong never break, first and foremost know that you are enough just as you are and give all of that over to God in prayer, and share it also with those who love you. Know that also that Jesus will always come for you, too. It doesn't mean you, you will have smooth sailing. Oh, not at all. It wasn't true for those disciples, either. It will just mean you will know that you are enough, and that you are deeply loved just as you are. It will mean that in the midst of the chaos, his peace will reside within you. But let us be clear about something else, too. This is no contemplative priest, peace he is offering. Yes, it will give us strength. It will remind us that we are loved. But it will also fill our hearts with compassion and our souls with a thirst for justice. As it did with those earliest disciples, it will help us to step beyond our own tombs of fear and vulnerability and call us to live as a resurrection people. It will help us to be the ones others can turn to and their Daniel Striped Tiger moments. So in this time of hiding behind the doors of our home in fear of the virus, when we may be crying or shaking or dreaming or breaking, the gift that Jesus gives us, gives each one of you, is knowing that you are not a fake. You are not a mistake. You are loved just for being who you are, and you are enough to meet the days ahead. The gift he gives you, is his peace. And what you do with that gift is entirely between you and God. I want to leave you with a quote of Teresa of Avila. I have a framed copy, a gift from the bishop at my installation as your rector, and hangs above the Perdu in my vesting room where I pray before worship. It reads, May today there be peace within. May you trust God that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content knowing you are a child of God. Let this presence settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. My dear people, Christ's peace be with you. Amen. Let us stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and proclaim the basic creed of the Church. We believe in one God, the Mother, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Mother, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the mother. Through her all things were made. For us and for our salvation, she came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the mother. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the mother, who with the mother and the son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the risen life of Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Breathe your spirit into us, renew us with your power, unite us in mission, and send us into the world with your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth, for fields and forests, gardens and vineyards, and all newly planted crops. Sustain our world with clean water and favorable weather. God, in your mercy, hear our our prayer. prayer. For the nations, empower leaders to work for the well-being of all. Send peace into every place where people live in the shadow of violence and displacement. Free all who are isolated behind walls of fear. We pray now for our communities of Bloomfield and Glen Ridge. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in need, look with compassion toward those who bear hidden wounds. Draw near to those who seek you. Comfort the dying, console the grieving, and heal the sick. We pray now for those on our parish prayer list. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember those who have died in faith. Inspire us by their witness. Bring us with them to the heavenly feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray also for all the healthcare workers and emergency volunteers who are risking their lives. We pray as well for all those who have lost people or are worried about their health and those who now name either silently or aloud. Sylvia Lloyd. Carol Loretta, the Mitchell family. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make them the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring them courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. It is so nice to have um, so many of you worshiping with us today. Um, You may have noticed that we are a smaller crowd. Um, The diocese, in working with the uh, governor's office, has asked us to reduce the uh, maximum participants to uh, three rather than eight. Um, But thankfully, um, each week we will have a soloist who will double as a lector. And we give thanks to our director of music, Bill Davies, as well. Uh, And today, to Janet um, (laughs) Bellis. Uh, who uh, is our soloist, um, for them being here and offering uh, uh, themselves in service to this worship. Um, If you are uh, worshiping with us and would like to uh, offer a donation in thanksgiving to God, um, there's a virtual offering plate link that will be posted both on Zoom and on Facebook Live. As you likely know, organizations across the the country are having trouble, and that includes churches. So 
um, anything that you are able to do, uh, we are grateful for it. And we also pray for you, as many of you are in vulnerable places economically, and we hope and pray that uh, things turn around as well very quickly for you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give your thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. say together the prayer found on page 17. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us say together our closing prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Mother, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have redeemed us and made us your children through the resurrection of your Son, our Savior. Bestow upon your people the riches of your blessing. Amen. Through the waters of baptism, you raise them from sin into newness of life. Make them holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. You brought them out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer. Bring them to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer, be with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth to proclaim the good news of God in Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
This concludes our worship service today. We look forward to having you join us next week.